hello everyone and welcome to the Street Corner channel. Uh, this channel is all about street photography and uh, in previous video I've discussed and shared several photos I liked on Instagram. Uh, you can uh, see those here and uh, now today I would like to talk about a bit of a how to get into street photography if you are new or beginner or just don't know how to start. There are a lot of videos in YouTube, of course, <clears throat> and a lot of articles that discuss how to approach street photography because this is a very uh, easy, relatively easy way to approach um, uh, photography in general, and it's a very uh, dynamic uh, field. So um, basically, we can split this into several uh, aspects. First of all, we have the locations. So um, you need to think about where do you want to take the photographs. The second one is uh, the aspect of time. When do you want to take the photographs? Do you want to take the photographs early in the morning or late in the evening or maybe in the middle of the day when you take a, a lunch break? It really depends on, on, the, um, on, on where you should uh, take your photos or how you uh, process on, and present them. Also, there is the aspect of the approach. Do you ask somebody to, to take his photograph or do you do it candidly? Um, another aspect is the fact that you have to think about law and ethics. Is it, is it allowed or is it okay to take photographs in your country? Okay, so there are also aspects which are legal. The last one is the gear aspect. So I will discuss a bit about what you should and shouldn't take, what it is recommended. Of course, you can take whatever you want. But this is my experience of how to handle uh, a good um, gear aspect uh, and not to kill yourself or not to, not to make yourself uh, feel horrible, okay? So comfort is very critical uh, in street photography, in my opinion. When we talk about location, we need to consider uh, that since we are new in this genre, we want to have the easiest way uh, to get uh, into the, the street photography and feel comfortable. So um, best practice for newcomers is to come and also for, for, exp uh, for those that have practiced it for many years is to go for the easy parts. And location is something that we can control because we decide where to photograph. And street photography happen happens everywhere. It doesn't need to be in New York or Paris or behind the train station. It can be everywhere. It just needs the, the eye and the vision and the timing to take the photographs. So to make your life easier, it's better to take a place which will have it where is buzzing with activity. There are a lot of people going around, doing a lot of stuff, uh, and are basically are focused on many, many things, but are not on you specifically, and not on their environment in, in any case. Um, another good point is street corners, by the way, because street corners uh, converge on two streets that collide, and at that street corner you have a lot of interaction sometimes, or sometimes uh, interesting um, aspects of one side with the other side, uh, like in this example that I took in uh, Tel Aviv, um, and you know it's it's very easy to just position yourself there, just wait and see and see what comes to your way. It can be daunting, especially if it's a very busy street, it's a very busy corner, then there are so many people that they are overlapping one another, there are a lot of layers and can be complex. So maybe it's best to start with um, not a very busy corner, but not a very quiet corner, because then you will stand out. Um, markets is another play, good place to see. There are a lot of corals. There are a lot of people, there are uh, uh, people that sell. So people are uh, all, always involved with, with buying and selling, so they are less involved in what happens around them. Um, large open malls. You can also go for small uh, closed mall, but again, I would uh, devise that to check to see if it's not a private place. And if it is, you should skip to the laws part and hear that video because this is critical. Because in some cases, it, you can't photograph, and, uh, and security or uh, security guards can can just ask you to go away. 
Um, and generally, main commerce uh, streets, streets that have a lot of stores, a lot of fronts with, with face, uh, facades that you can take photographs that mirrors what happens on the street, or there is a semi, semi um, opaque so you can see what, what's happening behind the window and what's happening behind you as you photograph or in the street. So that you can combine these, these, uh, these um, differences between the inside and the outside that can make a lot of combination. This is very trendy now in Instagram. Um, but in general, the idea is that when people are mostly busy with themselves and their surrounding, um, it's easier for you to take the photograph. So usually uh, in photography in general, um, it is especially if you are taking photos outside, and not in a closed environment, which you can control the light exactly, like in the studio or in your home. Um, it's best practice is to go for the early morning or the late evenings because then the light is uh, relatively soft and it's much more pleasant. Uh, and uh, and corals are very vivid, so you get a lot of uh, atmosphere also. So it's the best way to do that. However, sometimes you don't have any choice. You have to take the photos in mid-morning. Uh, in such case, you might want to take photos in shade, but just make sure that you're taking it in full shade and not in partial, because if this will happen, you will have some issues with exposure because one part of the, uh, of the photographs, which will be under the sun, will be a very, it will be very highly exposed while the shade will be uh, underexposed. So if you decide to go for the for the sunlight uh, part, you will not see details in the shade and vice versa. Of course, you can do some cool kinds of, of, of uh, shadow fields and, and stuff like that. But uh, if the situation is very, very uh, contrasting, that will be very evident in your photographs and it will be clear that you have, um, you know, played with, um, with the exposure. And I don't think it's very, um, it's, oh, it's for one thing, it will make your life a bit harder to generate a pleasing photos post-production. And also it will be quite uh, evident when you post it. And not all, everyone likes this type of, of colors. Now, uh, in addition to the time where, in relation to where the sun is, there's also the aspect of time in regard to events. For example, uh, you may want to go when there are large events. It can be a concert. It can be uh, all kinds of, of temporary markets or, st or stores that people are uh, erecting at times. Sometimes, you know, when there is a, a holiday. Uh, and even when there are protests, there are a lot of photographs that take photos, street photographers that take photos of protests because there is so much uh, energy on the, in the in the street. You can get quite good photographs, and you don't have to really work so hard. People also are not aware of you, and even if they are aware of you, they are since they are going to a protest, they are expecting to see media photographers, videographers, what what have you. So so even if they will see you take a photo, they will take us. They, they will consider you as press even. So they will be even happy to take a photograph, uh, to be photographed. So uh, protest is another uh, way, really relatively easy to get into the uh, street photography genre and to explore and see if it works for you or not and what exactly works for you.